Hi there. I am glad you could join me today. Today we will connect the ASUS ROG Ally to the MetaQuest 2. There are three ways to do it and only one requires the use of a cable. Why do we need to do this? Well, you can game on the huge VR screen and it's a lot of fun gaming in the VR environment. You will see. Then we can play VR games using the ASUS ROG Ally as the hardware. How well does it run? Well, that's a topic for another video. Let's get right into it then. We need to install certain software and then we can get started with it. First, download and install the official Oculus app on the ROG Ally. Search for it or you can head to the URL you see on screen directly. Once installed, open up the app directly on the ROG Ally. You should see a screen on your ROG Ally similar to what you will see here on screen. You can connect the MetaQuest to the Ally in two ways. Wirelessly called AirLink and using a wire and it's just called a link connection. I have already set up my device for the purpose of the tutorial. Basically what you do is you click on the devices tab on the left hand side on your ROG Ally screen and then you switch on your MetaQuest 2 as well and follow the on-screen instructions. You will have to confirm a pairing number that should be the same on your ROG Ally screen and in your MetaQuest as well. This completes the setup of connecting your ROG Ally with the MetaQuest 2. Next, I want to show you how to use a USB cable with the docking station of the ROG Ally to connect physically to the Quest 2. I did use the USB-C to C cable I had and the performance was terrible. I couldn't even open up a game, let alone record it. Hence, use the docking station to connect a data transfer cable to the MetaQuest. Even with this, it gives a warning asking us to use a USB 3 cable. The link cable on their website is around $80. Here, you can see me using a USB-A to a USB-C cable. The USB-A end goes into the one of the ports in the docking station, one of the USB-3 ports. The other end goes into the USB C charging port of the MetaQuest. Then it is time to connect the USB-C cable from the docking station itself into the ROG Ally. I will next show how the performance on the Quest is with the cable connected between the Quest and the Ally. I will be playing the Diablo 4 game. If all the connections have been set up as I described, this should work without any issues. You can launch the quest link from the quick settings menu or from the settings menu. From the settings, you have to head to system and from there select quest link. You will see a lot more options here than in the quick launch menu. Hence this is useful if you want to change from air link to physical connection and modify other connection settings. Enable the physical connection and launch the app. You will see that it will take some time for it to load but it's much faster with the physical connection than with the air link. You can change settings if you want to. I wanted to keep high quality panel rendering off to see if it improves performance but the selection itself seemed a little bugged. Head to the desktop option next to see your ROG Allies screen mirrored here in the virtual environment. You can select any game of your choice and open it up. I chose to open up Battle.net and play Diablo 4. It loads quite fast with the physical connection.
by the way you can control how close or far the virtual screen is to you by using the trigger button and the thumbstick of the quest controller you can move it up and down to control how far or close the virtual screen is to you I had difficulty getting the Xbox controller to work with the ROG Ally connected to the Quest headset. Hence, I am actually holding the ROG Ally itself and playing. Even with this, there are some pop-ups that appear during gameplay. I don't know if that is because of the Quest controllers or some other issue. just like this These pop-up kept popping up so often that I couldn't even see where I was going and what I was doing on screen. Got quite frustrating. I lack the need of mana. You can see me trying to turn this way and then the other way trying to see around the pop-up. Eventually you see what happens here. I'm out of potions. Out of potions, got zoomed in for some reason and couldn't see what I was doing. Well, you can see the result. You can see that I'm having some difficulty quitting the game as well. I had to use the quest controllers to try and quit and it looked as if uh, the cursor was following my head position and it was trying to select something else and the controller itself was trying to select something else and it was confusing to say the least. Eventually I got out of the game and yeah so it's it's not a perfect experience again you can see me struggling here I'm trying to see how exactly it works see the, there's that pop-up coming up again and you can see me struggling to point at the right place so still not done see the pop-up again I guess I was pressing some wrong button I'm not sure and then once you exit the game there's this dance of lights which happens for uh, quite a few seconds again and then you're back to your virtual environment you exit by clicking on disable quest link. Next I'll be showing you how the game performed using the air link. We launch it similarly. 
as we launched with the physical connection just make sure that the cable is removed and air link is enabled and launch the app in the same way and then load the desktop and launch the game similarly just like before we saw that the game is taking up more time to load here than with the physical connection Overall, it is a lot slower than with the physical connection, even the loading times. I guess it's because the internet is being used to run the game as well as to transfer data from the ROG Ally to the Quest as well. I will cut the loading parts here. It's taking too long. You can straight away see that the performance is quite choppy here. And the dreaded pop-ups are back again. So that was a short display of the gameplay using the air link. Again I'm having trouble getting out of the game, similar to what I had with the physical connection. I had a lot more trouble here again and I just skipped ahead to the part where I am eventually able to log out of the game. I had to use the quest controller again and finally with you can see that I am still having difficulty I was able to exit the game and return to the virtual environment. There's the dance of lights again and it is a lot longer than before. I'll skip this too. We are finally back to the virtual environment and I'm quitting the air link this time. Next, I'll be using the big screen app. Basically, we're going to share the desktop. If you have used the big screen app before, you will know that there is a remote desktop sharing option so go to the url displayed on screen and download the app on your ssrog ally first you can check the features and how to use the app on their website itself basically run the app on your uh, ssrog ally and launch the app on the oculus quest here you can see me running the app on the ROG Ally first, you launch the app and it basically asks you permission to allow network access. It's basically it, unless you want to share your uh, desktop with someone else, there is no need to register also. You keep this app open on your ROG Ally and launch the app 
on your quest too. Wait for it to load. This is in real time. I'm not skipping anything here. So there you go. For those of you who haven't used this app before on the Quest 2, it's uh, quite a wonderful app. It looks better than what you see on screen here. Here it looks as if the screen, your uh, virtual screen is quite far away from you, but it isn't like that. Change the setting to 1080p. Here you can see that the Robo Vacuum Cleaner is uh, close to your feet. Many times I find myself lifting up my feet. That's how realistic it is. Anyway, you saw me select the remote desktop sharing option here and change the resolution to 1080p. Next, you can see that the screen on your ROG Ally is mir mirrored here. You launch the game similarly and let's see how it runs here. It actually runs quite well. I was quite surprised and it actually looks better than what you see here. It actually feels like you're sitting in your own home theater and gaming. That's, that's how good it looks. There is some stutter here and there, but I still feel this is much better than both the air link and the physical link connection on the first app. It felt much smoother. So that's it I guess guys. Thank you so much for watching this. You can uh, skip ahead to the end of the video if you want or watch the rest of the gameplay. My take from this uh, tutorial and my experience playing all three modes is that the big screen VR is the best experience for gaming it, uh, trust me it looks better than what you're seeing on screen here thank you again for watching please consider liking sharing and subscribing to our channel it really helps in the growth of the channel if you have any suggestions please comment in the comment sections below also let me know if you like the videos to have voice over whether you want my voice or the other uh, ai generated voices also let me know if you want me to make more tutorial videos or gameplay videos thank you again see you in the next one bye